This week, the fiends watched. Bad candy. Ghouls, werewolves, vampires, ghosties with the mosties. Mikey, what did you think about this film? This film was the worst. As John Raphael would say, this film sucked and I hated it and so many things wrong with it. So uh, yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. Mikey, what did you think of Bad Candy? I wanted to turn it off after 20 minutes and I realized there was an hour and 44 minutes total and I go, you gotta be kidding me. I didn't like anything about this movie, Mikey. And um, and you're gonna it, put it on Halloween, Mikey? You're gonna put it on Halloween? Yeah, this movie was not it. It is incoherent. It's pointless. It's there's no love behind it. There's no craft behind it. There's no I don't know. There's nothing clever about it. You, you don't need money to make a good movie. You don't need a budget to make a great horror movie or anything like that. There's a lot of examples out there. So. Yeah, I, that's those are my overall thoughts about it. I gotta say, that's the most somber you've ever been <laughs> on a on a. Hey, what do you think of this movie? That's the most somber you've ever been. Well, because you know me, man. I love Halloween. Of course, right? I'm the Halloween guy here. So I was so excited for this. This didn't even need to to reach anywhere near Trick or Treat or any of the horror anthologies that I really love. It didn't need to be anywhere near that. It just mm. needed to kind of shocked me a little bit, get me a little up for Halloween. It's only September. So I'm like, let's fucking go. And it didn't do any of that. It was like a slap in the face to people who love Halloween, horror, and anthologies. And I feel like we're both that. So slapped us both in the dick. Hard. I want you to call in with your scariest ideas, your deepest fears, your spookiest nightmares, so I can twist the knife into your stories. And you dig it. This movie should have been 82 minutes. And I feel like that's, we say that a lot, especially about like horror anthologies, but if it's well executed, oh, it can be two and a half hours. But well executed, this was not. No. This was a steaming, yep. steaming pile of dog shit mixed with horse shit. They Both. didn't know where they were going. Both of those. They didn't. And the funny thing is, there's two directors, and I think they directed all of the segments. So it's mm. every segment felt similar, like visually acting wise production wise so i'm like why'd you make an anthology if you're just gonna usually it's different directors coming in there so that was odd um so i guess we'll just go through the stories really quick there's five overall stories or six there's six overall Felt stories like six yeah okay. I, wrote, I wrote them all down i oh, put names God. on them so i'm just gonna say so you have one which is the little witch then you have the drug dealer then number three is the nurse rape then number four is the party robber Number five is the Uber Trooper, and number six is the Burn House. Those are the names that I've created for these stories. I have no idea if they are the actual titles for these segments. If you never said that, I would say, oh, you got that from online. Very well done. And uh, I love all those titles. I just hate every single segment. Hey, Mikey, w when you said every title out loud that you just were, in my head I'm going through, oh yeah, editing nightmare. This movie, editing nightmare. There are so many things that don't make sense. And we can, you know, we do some shorts here and there, and I know you do a lot of the edit, you do all the editing, but there are things that even me sitting there, I'm going, hey, there was a group of 10 naked people and now there's a guy with a shirt on. He was not there before. Yeah. It drove me up the wall. I was getting um, nauseous almost from the amount of cuts and like, yeah, okay. it was not consistent. Well, yeah, so yeah, because your first example is continuity. And I agree with you. There's continuity errors with the shirt. But when you said editing, I'm going, yeah, the first, my first note before I even wrote down what the titles were, mm. the editing is frantic, it's weird, and it's incoherent. And that first segment is almost it's like a weird art house thing with random shots out of place with no context and there's no geography we we don't know where we are there's a girl walking down a the street then boom she's in the woods then boom she's at this treehouse but 
the geography of this movie is so bad when people just walk into a room. I don't know where the camera's pointing and what I'm supposed to be looking at. So bad. And like you said, the amount of cuts, it was like Michael Bay on steroids with the amount of cuts. I was counting. I'm going one, two, three, four. I'm going, there's four cuts in a second and a half right there oh. in a, of a room, of a scene of a guy in the bathroom. It, it's not, it's not justified. And it's, it sucks. It really fucking sucks. This is dog shit. I, I go, are they going to try to connect this? And they had a poor attempt at the end, but I didn't feel that connection throughout. And there, like you said, there was no heart behind it. So it's almost like, they just said, let's just make this as fast as we can. Let's just make a horror anthology. I got like five kind of ideas, maybe six. And like, we'll try to just tie it up at the end. Yeah. I fucking hated it. Yeah. Disgusting. They're stories. They're not really stories. Mikey, There's... I don't mean to cut you off, but I have That's to. Fine. I'm so sorry. It's fine. Are they happening as Corey Taylor is getting the phone calls? Or are these old stories? I don't know the answer and it's been driving me nuts ever since. You've been saying Corey Taylor? Yeah. <laughs> who the? How do you know this guy's name? He What's was going the lead on? singer of Slipknot. He's the guy who was at the mic. He's Chili Billy. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, no, yeah. I know, I know yeah. who in the movie, but I was like, why do you keep referring to him by name? So you had the lead singer of Slipknot and then fucking, what's his name from Gremlins? That's yeah. the fucking matchup that you yeah. have in this movie. Zach, whatever his name is. But, um, but the stories, though, am I right, yeah. though? Confusing, right? You don't know. Are no, they're, they're happening right now? Yeah, the overall idea didn't get cleared up until the end until we realized that he's telling one of these last stories so i'm like okay i get it. now he's telling the stories but before that you had no inclination that this dude on the radio is telling the story we've watched some stoinkers when it comes to anthology yeah like real bad ones 100 percent. and there's a ton out there you can go to prime right now and there's like five on there yes. and unfortunately they all do what this does where they don't yep. they don't they don't find that ooey gooeyness to connect, right? There's nothing that's like, oh, that was clever. Oh, that was cool. Yeah. Oh, this makes sense. You're right though, but not having different directors changes everything. Yep. Because it's just an hour and 45 minutes of one or two guys' visions and that becomes exhausting. Yep, I think the I other director's a female, so just throwing it out there, just making sure it's a man and a fee. It's a man and a woman. Just throwing it out there, man. You All said right. two guys. Oh, I did? My yeah. bad. Sorry But anyway, that. the first story, it's a little fucking girl and she's with her friends on Halloween, and she draws things that come to life. And everyone knows it. And everyone knows it, and kills her dad. And then there's another person we're introduced to named Bad Candy. He's the titular villain, and he's like a Sam, just a total Sam ripoff from Trick or Treat. Totally. And he gets introduced there. I'm like, okay. And then he grabs one of the kids, turns into a little doll, ripping off. Come on, dude. Ernest, Ernest scares stupid. <laughs> yes, dude. <laughs> And then, <laughs> then that's it. That's then the story ends. And then you go to the next story, meet a drug dealer who goes to a gas station and buys drugs. Didn't make any sense. <laughs> I had a, to rewind it. He's in the party selling drugs, correct? He is. And then goes to a gas station, runs into a random dude and buys drugs. I had to double, I rewound it. I go, who just handed the money to who? Me too. Because I go, then it got me thinking, oh, maybe that's his connect. It was strange. Like maybe that's who he re-ups from. For a hundred dollars? I know. It was only a hundred bucks. It was so stupid. That's not it. It's just dumb. It's just dumb. Yeah. Um, and then the punch of that is a random killer kills him in the bathroom. That is that's, it. We know nothing it. about him. We know nothing about the killer. Story ends. Yep. Third story, a fucking coroner who was at that party. Oh, it's connecting. Uh, she has to go fill in for work and there's a dead body and she tries to rape the dead body of a guy. And then the guy gets up with black eyes and cut to black. Yeah, she took like drugs. Like he attacks her and then, yeah, cut cut to black. I'm like, what? Every fucking thing I said, pointless. Yeah. Everything I said, pointless. Then the party robber, um, so a girl is at that same party. She leaves the house, right? She was in. The, she was talking to her old boyfriend, someone. She leaves the party, gets, in, gets into an Uber, goes back to her house, and the same guy is at her house. And a girl got <laughs> dropped off there for no reason yeah, before her. Yeah, for no her. reason. Oh, I'm going to find you. We'll find you a way home. Wait, what? Why? Why is that girl dropped Nothing off there? Nothing makes sense. And it was the driver who was in a later story. Well, gonna, but, no, no, no. I'm getting to that. But yeah, you. no, it's okay. But no, you're right. Yep. The same guy is just, is he yep. robbing the house? Mikey, it's like a fifth grader yep. just came up with like, a, oh, I have until tomorrow to get this thing done. I'm just going to write it. Yeah. So then the fifth story 
the Uber Trooper, I thought was the best one. I thought that that one had like, ju- it wasn't good at all. I'm just saying it had a little bit more to it, a little bit more story. Like, oh, these guys are ex-soldiers. Like you get into who these people are. That's the only time we get into who these people are at all. And it's the same Uber driver who was at the, who was, who's in the previous story. They go, pick up a prostitute. Happy Halloween. You gonna die, bitch. Sees their pimp. They go fight. The Uber driver fights a bunch of the fucking people. And then we're like, what? Then they tie him up in a fucking thing that Mikey was talking about, the, the continuity error, pumpkin and no shirts. And their friend, I guess, like some medical experiment, they said, didn't they say? Yeah, like, yeah. It was like a throwaway line. They threw it, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, okay, what? It turns into like this pretty good practical effect of a sure. creature. I thought it was good effects. I'm like, yeah. that so sucks that it's wasted on this horrible story. And he runs around and kills these people in pumpkin, uh, with pumpkins over their head. Okay. And the last story, the burn house is absolutely incoherent horribly done, tries to tie in one of the radio DJs, my man from Gremlins, that he burned a kid in the house by accident by locking him in there when they were younger, and some ladies, some psychics there, and they're trying to film a ghost show. Nothing to make sense. I didn't know who anyone was, and I was so frustrated by the end of it. So those are the six stories that I wanted to let people know. So that's it. Good job. And if they haven't watched, they pretty much get the idea right now. There's nothing more in those stories <laughs> no. than I quickly described. It's I hate to point. say it, there's just no, there's no more details in there. No, it's a good point. Everything was laughable, right? Like every, you're going, oh, not but in a good way. it wasn't. Oh, okay, no, I was going to say, because it wasn't so bad, it was good, and that's why I was mad. No, okay. no, no, yeah, okay. right, let me rephrase. It's not like it was, um, what's the one based on the comic book that was that was great, the, the horror anthology. Veronica. Thank you. Not, not like that, where you're like, oh my, like that's entertaining as fuck, right? Exactly. Something like this, you're going, uh, oh, like not only do you have bad writing but you also have like local theater actors yeah so it's just nothing is getting pulled off nothing sounds good no nope. everything sounded like shit the not mixes. even just the words but the mixes no, the were mixes were God. horrible i couldn't hear half of the shit especially when the hookers were talking to each other i'm going mm. oh okay happy halloween you gonna die bitch bye it's poorly made all around yeah and you can say that for every single story there's nothing good you're right though about the you called it the uber trooper would you yeah, call it? Yeah, okay. yeah yeah you're right about that that's the yeah. only one that just had a little something to it where you go oh i'm gonna remember that from this horror anthology i'll remember that where they're throwing spikes through people and this guy's hunting them down they commit an ultimate sin they're driving in the car and the prostitute says, oh, so what's your deal, Bram Stroker? Okay, Bram Stroker, what's on your mind? Actually, Bram Stroker was the author. She said, and I'm like, oh, it's a joke. You know what I'm saying? Because she's a prostitute stroker. And then no, the fucking Uber driver goes, um, Bram Stroker was actually the writer. That, and I go, oh, stop. my God. Guys, it's Bram Stoker, Dracula. It's not, there's no R extra r in there so no care yeah i said just just stop just stop yeah no care whatsoever didn't care to fact check well there is nobody checking the script that's the point there's no script supervisor on this fucking thing i don't think there was a script <laughs> yeah it's a, oh. mikey if this was improv that's a very oh, no, good I'm not point dead, i'm not even saying improv though like they improv it like i'm outline. just saying yeah like they went in with okay there's gonna be a girl at a party and she's gonna take drugs and she has to go work as a coroner she's gonna rape a dude done we don't need any, and then on set we'll figure it out Sure. That's that's how it felt. It felt like this was half-assed, no heart, no love put into this. And when you get awesome low-budget horror, Halloween, especially movies, that they're gems. And I wanted this to be a little bit of that. I, I would have took Tales of Halloween. I like Tales oh, of Halloween. Sure. It's like an entertaining B movie. You know. See you later. I wanted that from this, and it just wasn't. Oh, I'll take the first story in Tales of Halloween over anything that we've seen. It's yeah. not even a question. I'll take a lot of those. Oh, of course, I'll take I'll, every no. story in Tales of Halloween over this shit. Oh, of course. Yeah. Of course. I just pointed out the first because I do enjoy the first. Yeah, I just think one of the worst things of this overall is the editing behind it. They didn't let anything breathe. It just cuts, 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 and random stuff. There was no like film geography where even if we're in a room, like how big's this room? Where's the entrance? Where's the exit? Oh, they have a couple establishing shots and then in the part, it's just so badly done in every aspect. I don't want to rip on a fucking, you know, low budget filmmaker who did, but that's not it. You don't need money to do good editing. You don't need money to have a good story. You don't need money to do those things. So I'm cool with the limited budget and the bad effects. Like I'm cool with that. So it's just the other things that you don't need money for. They failed in this. And it's a slap in the face to all the, you know, Halloween fucking loving motherfuckers out there. So 
Yeah, fuck them and fuck this movie, right? I, I get it. That's basically what you're saying. I'm with you on that. Yeah, so, all right, you want to do scores? Let's do scores. Uh, you go first, man. What's your score? I'm going to give this movie a three. A three? Okay. Let's give it a flat three. What do you give it? I'll agree with you. I'll give it a three. Hey! We'll give it a three, dude. Yeah. We're three guys, dude. That's what we do. That's what we're the three. We're the three. And if we're you had to guess a quick little budget, what would you think? I don't know, man. A couple hundred thousand bucks, maybe? Yeah. I don't know. I'll say 200 grand. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. A couple hundred. Yeah. Sure. Sure. And Corey Taylor, who you're a huge fan of now, um, you know, he's always involved with some horror stuff. So that's why it was just cool to see him. He was in all the, or he's at least in part two of uh, the 80s, uh, pro, what was on Amazon Prime, um, where it showed all the slasher films. I can make you think of the name. I have no idea. What do you mean? <laughs> There's part one and part two where they went through like all the 80s horror films. On Amazon? Uh, yeah. No. Was it on Shutter or was it on Prime? Oh, you're talking about oh, you're talking about Search of Darkness? There we go, dude. Oh, yeah, my yeah, own, yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the guy's the best horror documentary ever about cinema i swear to god like it's eight it's it's so good parts one and two are really good they're on shutter right now go check it out i think they upped their price from 47 to maybe 54 i got the notification yesterday but i hit yeah renew i'll renew it you know what i'm saying 47 to 54 yearly yeah what do you mean oh okay Specific. i was going what are you talking you about monthly, I, feel like, I feel like i pay five bucks a month what <laughs> dude you pay the year you got it's like 20 bucks off uh, <laughs> you've uh, had it for like two years <laughs> you've had it for so long <laughs> <laughs> all right well um yeah, that's it. I had a couple other notes, but there's nothing really to talk about with this piece of shit, dude. So No, I, and Mikey, but it. you know what breaks my heart? I wish there was. I wish it was yeah. like, hey, man, throw yeah. this into the Rolodex of things to watch every Halloween. And it's just, nope, spit nope. in the face. It's, it's horrible. It's, my, again, dick hurts. Yeah. Slapped it. I think that's for another reason, but, you know, it's fine. Cut we'll, that part out. Cut we'll, that part we'll out. We'll move past it. So yeah. that's it. Uh, we will definitely have more Halloween reviews coming up. Halloween reviews coming up. But until then, thank you for swinging by to watch one more time. As always. We'll be back next time with something fucking way better than Bad Candy. Absolutely. Not. Nah.